Здравствуйте, меня зовут Такай Пьохио. I would, uh, I started out with Russian. Uh, that is because I am presently uh, doing business in uh, Russia as well. And as for my English, unfortunately, I cannot speak in English, so my presentation shall be in uh, Japanese. So let's go into the subject. Uh, there is a Japanese saying, as many as the number of stars in the sky, but how exactly, how many stars do you think you can see in the sky? This is what I would like to talk about. For example, in Shibuya here in Tokyo, how many stars do you think you can see? The number is uh, actually about 10, that's about half the number of first magnitude stars in the sky. Well, this is because the city is so bright. But if we go to uh, spots such as Kawasaki or Yokohama, you can see hundreds. You can see Orion in the back screen here. Uh, and we can see a little more of uh, stars. This is what you would be able to see from Mount Fuji. Uh, the number of stars you could see is 6,000 to 9,000. So many, many stars in the night sky from Mount Fuji. Now, uh, the issue comes to how many stars do planetariums show? And uh, they, uh, the conventional planetariums roughly showed 6,000 to 9,000 people were satisfied with it. But the megastar that I invented, the number of stars it projects, is actually 22 million stars. What, you may say? But there is a reason behind why I did this. It is because there are so many stars that you cannot see with the naked eye, and so many stars that I would like to show. And what on earth drove you to do this, you may think? Well, let me lead you through my story. This photo is a picture of me when I was in the fourth grade. And it was then that I became interested in uh, planetariums. Uh, there was a huge uh, planetarium in my neighborhood, and I was very taken and interested in uh, the vision it projected and the mechanism behind it. I was not uh, very good in school, and I was bullied on. But I thought uh, maybe I could be very popular with the girls, and maybe I could make a girlfriend if I built a planetarium. So first, I found a kit. And it looks something like this. You punch holes into a cardboard cylinder and then set a light bulb inside. And when you turn the lights off, there you can see the starry night sky. But it's quite different from what you see in a planetarium. So I looked into the mechanism behind it. What you see on the left hole, the left side is the pinhole type planetarium. And on the right is a lens type uh, optomechanical a planetarium uh, using lenses. So I tried to, my attempt at uh, building this kind of planetarium resulted in this blueprint, which I drafted in the sixth grade. I tried to be, build an actual uh, planetarium out of this, but I only went halfway. It's uh, impossible for a grade schooler to do this, uh, build this alone. And then in high school, I went to Australia and was amazed at what I saw in the sky. These are all stars. They fill the sky. And you can see the Milky Way here. And it is a strip of light. And the other thing I noticed was the starry night sky that I actually saw was quite dif quite different from what I was accustomed to be to see in planetariums. So I entered into college and this is what I made in uh, college and uh, but I was not be I was not able to use it for long because I it fell off the table and uh, it broke. So my dreams of getting a girlfriend, ended right there, uh, since also I was in the sciences and I was not around uh, girls a lot, but I'm not here to talk about that. I went on to pursue my dreams and I built a machine that uses a laser 
a very, very precise machine that can punch holes. It is a machine that there is no other in the world. This is a picture of it uh, being assembled in my room. I know with the suma door, it, it looks very lived in and sloppy. But this led to the Megastar, which I brought to England. And it is a portable machine. And here you can see it projecting the Australian night sky that I saw in the stars. It projects 100 times more stars than the conventional planetariums, which you can see on the graph. So here, let's uh, make a comparison. So the next one we will see is a projection of the megastar. So you can see how there is depth uh, to the night sky, to outer space. So this megastar. Uh, was projected in many, many places. Uh, let me first show you where I made it uh, in a very dingy little room. Uh, but I was able to show it in a place like this, uh, in a very, very grand venue. And then one day I received a letter from a woman. She wrote, it was just so lovely that I wanted to marry my boyfriend sitting next to me. And I thought, oh, so it's not about me. But. What I did discover was that even though I wanted to, a girlfriend for myself, it was actually very pleasing to be able to provide to many what I had wanted for myself. So I thought that I am aiming for something that is bigger than me. And maybe I can contribute to the country. Maybe I could increase the birth rate in Japan. So from a dingy little room to a grand venue to a home device that I invented as well. And uh, I've sold over 600,000 units around the world with this home star. So let's see what this machine will project. Uh, since this is not a venue that is built for planetariums, uh, but uh, it will give you a good idea of uh, what my machine can show. The screen will would uh, spread 360 degrees if it was in a planetarium, but you are able to see one 10 million stars. And what I concluded from this was that you have to invent something new and show it to as many people as possible. And it just doesn't do uh, to do something unprecedented. Uh, you have to make it, uh, you have to uh, show it to many people as possible. And surely you are bound to be met with a new kind of a reaction. And that's where the game of catch starts. Through this interaction, you constantly elevate what you have produced. And when you pursue your dreams, you can not only get a girlfriend for yourself, but you can have many people get girlfriends for themselves as well. Thank you very much.